Welcome to the Key Chapters of the Bible podcast. This is a daily podcast that's going through the key chapters of God's Word. Well, have you ever had a time where you've just gone through God's Word, you're reading what the author is saying, and you're like, you know what? What he is talking about, his love for the Lord, his devotion to the Lord, that doesn't match anything I have experienced. Well, that's not an uncommon dynamic in the Christian life. And today, as we go to Psalm 119, starting in verse 145, we are going to see what God's Word has to say about how just to walk in closer, deeper, richer fellowship with Him. Hello again, everyone. My name is Russ Brewer, and we are going through the key chapters of the Bible. And today, we're looking at Psalm 119, verses 145 to 176. We're going to finish out our study in this fantastic psalm. It's been such a blessing for me to personally go through it. I hope it's been a blessing to you. And so as we go to this final study, there's a couple things I want to point out. Now. And one of the things I want to discuss is who wrote this psalm? We haven't had time to really get into that question before, but now I want to just kind of take a minute to talk about it. A lot of times people think, well, David wrote this psalm because it's just such a love uh, for the Lord and just devotion to the Lord. And it could be because David was a man after God's own heart and you just see his love for the Lord throughout the psalms he wrote. But another possibility is that this author is actually the man Ezra. Now, you remember from Ezra chapter 7, verse 10, that Ezra was a man who committed to knowing God's word, to living it out. He inclined his heart to it. He wanted to teach it. And you're really seeing that in so many ways, that's exactly what this psalm is doing here. Uh, This is a person who is clearly in love with the Lord and in love with his word, who really believes that God's word is God's revelation about himself to us. And he wants everyone else to know it. You know, they talk about the, the repetition is the mother of learning. And this passage, if it's anything, it's repetitious. And we're seeing this repetition over and over again of the love of the Lord, the love of his word, the love of truth, the desire to obey and follow it. That theme is repeated so many times here. It's really uh, innumerable amount of times here. And, and that, of course, fits Ezra's heart. Likewise, this is a teaching psalm. It's Remember, it's an acrostic psalm. It's based on the Hebrew letters of the alphabet. When we think about the Jews in this situation here, if it was written by Ezra, they have left the exile and, and they may have just kind of weakened on their language. Maybe the kids didn't really know it as well. And so the Alpha, Beta, Gimel, Dalit dynamic here um, helps teach the Hebrew letters. Uh, it just helps this whole thing be more memorable. Things like um, how they talk about being persecuted by princes. Uh, there's not a lot of princes doing persecution in Jerusalem otherwise, but there would have been back in Babylon. And even the fact that there's really no references to the temple or to the tabernacle or worshiping God through, through the sacrificial system, all of that didn't exist by the time Ezra came back from the exile. And so all of those things lead me to believe this may have been written by Ezra. And so we're just seeing Ezra's heart for the Lord. I don't want to say that definitively. We're seeing somebody's heart for the Lord. But if it's Ezra, we're just seeing that this was a man of God just seeking to help all of us, even us today, know and love God's word. Well, let's dive into this session together and look at what this has to say to us. This is our last time, our last section in in this uh, psalm here. We're just going to look at starting at verse 145, where he says, I cry to you with all my heart. Answer me, O Lord. I will observe your statutes. 146, I cry to you, save me. 149, hear my voice. All of that is showing us that there is just a wide range of emotions that God's people have when we are walking with him. At times when we go through life and we have difficulties and trials, we do cry out to the Lord. We go to him and we have real emotions and and real challenges. Uh, A believer, a follower of God is not immune to life's problems. So often people are like, hey, come to Jesus and all your problems go away. And certainly God gives us wisdom and so many of our problems that are caused by our own just um, doing dumb things. Yeah, that may go away. But real life does still hit us. Um, Diseases come and challenges come at work, challenges with family and and health and all those things. Those kinds of things still come to God's people. But here, the difference is that we can go to God for his word, for his wisdom. He will give us guidance, grace, and strength. And so we have this, that incredible, rich blessing of fellowship with him. And along those lines, as we just continue through this psalm here, we see that there really is a huge range of emotions that we're going to experience, that the psalmist experiences here. This is obviously a godly man. And here we see in verses 145 to 152, just he's calling out to the Lord. He's got this pained heart. We're going to see just uh, other pains coming as we go through this. But then we also see just delight, celebration, praise of the Lord. Like say down in verse 162, where he says, I rejoice at your word as one who finds great spoil. He just has just just great joy. Or 165, those who love your law have great peace. And so even though he's got suffering and pain going on, he also rejoices in the Lord. He rejoices in the treasures he finds in God's word. He has great peace. 
And so that is also just one of the blessings we have for being people of the word. When we walk in God's word, yeah, we're going to go through troubles, but we also have these great joys. No matter what age we are, no matter what we're going through, we can still have time where we come to God's word. Like, man, it was like treasure to me this morning as I was reading God's word. How often you have that? Like, you've read God's word and just it's so exciting to find some, some nugget there. The Lord just helps us to see and understand something. And it's like, man, I just want to tell somebody. Those are joys we have, and those are joys of the Christian life. Or 165, we just have that peace that passes understanding. We have that great peace. We just know that, you know what? God's in charge. I'm following his word. I'm following his ways. And whatever's going on, God has a reason for it. And I'm just going to ask him for the grace and strength and the wisdom just to live his ways and just walk with him. Another thing we're seeing here is that God's word and God's principles are truth. I'd like to have you look at a couple of verses here, uh, specifically verse 151 where he says, you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. Just this idea of just rock solid, bedrock truth. And then verse 160, the sum of your word is truth. And every one of your righteous ordinances is everlasting. You see, this is just a key principle of the Christian life. We need to know that God's word is truth. And I love how the author uses in verse 160, the sum of your words is truth. I just love that word sum there. You know, there is a spiritual reality to the word of God. These are true things that are really true and accurate for our life and how to walk with God. You know, I often think about this, and this is just kind of a silly side story, so bear with me for a second. But I think about Winston Churchill. It was said that Winston Churchill fought World War II on four hours of sleep. He said, you only need four hours of sleep. He kept a cot somewhere near his office, but otherwise just got four hours of sleep. And if somebody said, you know what, that's a great thing. I'm going to just live my life on just on four hours of sleep. We would have a ton of people walking around with sleep deprivation and not a lot of good stuff going on because it worked for Winston Churchill, but not for everyone else. That's not how God's word is. God's word, the sum of God's word, when you live out any given principle, you'll be walking a path of truth. You'll have arrived in a true place, walking a path of righteousness. Now, of course, rightly applied, because there are some people who will misunderstand it and misapply it. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the true, accurate understanding of God's word being truly lived on out. The sum of that will be a truthful life, a righteous life. We'll be walking paths of righteousness. You know, there is times when people get into a point of, you might, might almost call it a spiritual depression, where they're just discouraged and they're, they're really not taking God's word for real as God's instruction for how to live. Maybe they were looking at it as mystical principles, maybe almost like a, a magic book where they'd read a little bit and hopefully they'll find something, maybe just kind of, you know, kind of rub a, like an oil lamp and, and maybe God will appear and help them on out. But then they find that that's not how it works. And maybe because their family is going to church, they keep going to church or something like that but they get into a point of spiritual depression. And really the issue is they're not taking God's word as truth. Uh, maybe when their walk with the Lord is just kind of getting distant or dim or, or just it's not doing it for them, rather than saying, oh, something's wrong here. I need to really just come back to say like Psalm 119 and pray all this back to the Lord and make changes in my life. They don't do that. And so they stay in this state of just prolonged spiritual depression. It's almost like, like, say we're going to like an engineering college and you're learning about angles and how to find an angle of a triangle and the various properties of metals and, and all kinds of physics. And you got a person just in the corner, they're, they're just discouraged and depressed and like, I don't know how to build a bridge, you know? And you're like, listen, you can, you can build a bridge, figure out the angles, figure out the weight, figure out the properties of the metal you're going to be using, you know, how many, how many threads are on the screw, just figure it all on out. And they're like, no, I just can't do that. And it's like, well, hang on then you don't really believe that this engineering is actually true because we have all the answers right here in the engineering principles and codes and manuals and textbooks. No, I, I don't know how to build a bridge. I don't know what's wrong. I know my bridge keeps falling down. You know, it's like, follow the principles in the book. Well, it's the same with God's word. When we're getting to that point of spiritual depression or when we get to that point of just our faith is growing thin, come back to it and just the sum of this is truth and just ask God, Lord, give me the kind of heart the psalmist has here May I love your word like this. May I come to your word as truth like this. May I follow these precepts. Guide me, strengthen me, give me insight, open my eyes that I'd understand. If we pray to the Lord like this, he will answer those prayers and we will eventually come to a point where we're agreeing with the psalmist right here saying, man, God's word is true. Then all of that brings us to that point of celebration. If you go to the end of this psalm here, 169 to 176, you just see this, just this ending on celebratory praise of God. And no doubt, I mean, you just go through it. If you were to go through this whole psalm and pray all of these verses to God and just spend probably a couple hours just praising God for his word, you're going to come to the point here of these verses here. You're going to be saying in 171, let my lips utter praise because you'll just be seeing what God's word has done in your life. You'll be saying, verse 172, let my tongue sing of your word. 
or 175, let my soul live that it may praise you. You'll be like the, the like back in 164 where he says, seven times a day I praise you. I don't think it's a hard number. Like you got to have a little checkbox, check one, two, three. That's again, checkbox Christianity. But if we're really walking with God and if we're seeing all of the ways his word is true and all the insight it gives to us, we're going to be praising the Lord at least seven times a day, just throughout our day, just celebrating God and just praising him. And then the experiences that we see here in Psalm 19, at some level, they'll be ours. These aren't just like for special people. These are the experiences of everyone who comes to God's word with the kind of heart the psalmist has here, who spends this kind of time investing in knowing God's word and asking God to give him greater insight and understanding of God's word, making the changes to life, making, you know, shedding the wrong beliefs, all that goes into that. As that happens and as the word of God works in that person's soul, as the spirit of God applies it to their life, they'll be coming to the same place that the psalmist does here at the end of this psalm and just praising God. And so that's our study in Psalm 119. It has been such a rich blessing for me. I hope it's been one for you as well. And as we round out our day today, how about you just maybe just take some time and just offer this up to the Lord as praise. One, asking him to do all the things that we're seeing the psalmist asking in this verse here, that, that he would just tremble before the word of God, that, that God's word would just teach him and, and he would have insight and all that goes into that. But then end with just praising God, just saying, all your commandments are righteous, we see in verse 172, or that your law is my delight in 174. As we just come to him and just pour out our heart, may this be true of us. And may we just be people, may everyone who's listening to this podcast and be the kind of people who love God's word the way we see here and who walk in fellowship with him all of their days, that they would walk paths of righteousness. Well, that rounds out our time today. Thanks so much for listening. Looking forward to going to Psalm 120 with you tomorrow. Another great passage, and it's going to be a blessing, I believe, to our souls. Until then, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening. God bless. God bless.